What's up guys? So today in this video what we're going to be going through are three ways to get more out of your Airtable automation. So a lot of people I've been hearing have been running into the 25 automation limit within one base. And so what I'm going to be showing you is three ways to try to circumvent that, how to get more out of your Airtable automations uh, without reaching that limit quite as fast. So if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS and what we do is be a business owners probably just like you help you optimize your information systems. So that's some stuff like Airtable for a CRM or asset management, uh, Asana for project management, and Slack for communications. So if you're interested in any of that, you can check out the link down in the description, request a consultation from me or someone on my team. Without further ado, we'll get right in the video now. So as you can see, we are in the sales CRM here. We have plenty of automations. We've done demos on nearly all of these automations. Um, and what I'm gonna be showing you is how like as you can see, we're at 25. If I come back up here, I can't because it says this base already has the maximum number of automations. And if you're watching this video, you likely either heard about this or you're experiencing this right now and you're like, what do I do? So there's a few ways that you can do this. And the first way that I want to show you is making something dynamic. So what I mean by dynamic is a lot of times people don't know the difference between what's called static data or dynamic data. So static data would look like in the interactions, like discovery. Discovery is, stat is a static piece of data, but type can be dynamic. So type can change with each record. Whereas like discovery is just this, it's just certain records are only that. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about here was making a dynamic trigger. So here we can see automation two has not been set up at all. So instead of choosing, so you, have, you kind of have two options here. So to make a static trigger, what one would go do is they would come in here and say, when the interaction, the condition is that the type is discovery versus um, if you came in here to the same trigger, so I think we'll actually have to delete this one to be able to show you. So instead of doing that, what we can do is we can choose another trigger and instead to make it more dynamic, we can say when a record is updated. So if we now use when a record is updated in the interaction table, you can, if you need to filter down a view, you can. But here we can just say when the type is updated. So now this gives us uh, whenever any of those types is chosen and you can even filter, you can have a view where it filters out the certain types that you don't want to have chosen. But now, so say, imagine like when a interaction was a discovery call that was added, we would maybe want to move them to the next step in the sales CRM. But maybe just when we change when we add a status, when we update a status, then we do a certain action that would have happened no matter what the status changed to. So there, in that example, if there are four statuses there that you had the, like the same action on, instead of four different automation triggers and different automation setups, now you've taken it down to one and you still might have the same action. So that's the first one is trying to wrap your head around making this dynamic up here. And a really common way to do this uh, in the trigger by making this dynamic is to also make the action dynamic. So if we come back to our Airtable base, the second suggestion to get more out of your Airtable automations is to make the, is to add dynamic data in the action. So the most common example that I see this one with is when sending an email. A lot of times, maybe there's five people on your team and when something enters, like when, when a record matches certain conditions, you want to send an email to this person, but if it's assigned to this person, you send it to person two on your team. If it's assigned to person three, you send it to person three. What you end up having are five different automations for the five different people on your team so they can get notified about a very similar thing. So this is the example that I want to bring to you now is if we're in here 
And for example, let's see if there's any of these with an email by them. Looks like there's not, so we'll go with this one. So this one's winner record is updated. So this is not the greatest example, so we're gonna delete this. So the best example for this is when you use when a record matches conditions. And so previously maybe you used five different views. So like when, when a record matches these specific conditions and it's on person, it's assigned to person one, it enters this, like, her view, their view. When it's person two, we filter it by person two, and so so on and so forth through five people. Now, instead of filtering it down by just each specific person, what you can do is you can just filter it down by those generic conditions that anybody would get that reminder, but now we can make this dynamic in the action. And so what I'm gonna do here is, I'm, I think I actually need to add some stuff here, so uh, let's see. When the opportunity name is not empty, just so we can get some test data in here. Now what we can do, so imagine there's five people on your team, we want to send an email. When you write the two, because this is really the biggest thing that you're gonna be changing, and this is where you want, would want to add dynamic data in here. So here, we can insert the owner, or um, if, we, if it wasn't the owner, then we could insert, like if we had like a table of people on our team with their emails there, maybe they're not collaborators, we could come down to like uh, the, whoever is assigned to it and insert their like name or their email. Well, you'd insert their email here. Uh, but here we can insert the owner and we can come right here to email. So there, it doesn't really matter whose record it is, who, who owns that record it's going to send it to their email. So that's the, the first one is having dynamic information incorporated into the trigger. The second one is having dynamic data incorporated into the action. Uh, so now the, the third suggestion here to get more out of your Airtable automations is something that most people don't know. Uh, but if I come back out of here, and this has been doing this to me recently, so I'll just delete this, like covers it up in there. but. The other one is you have 25, you have a limit of 25 different automations. So you have, a, you have a limit of 25 triggers that you can set up in one base. But on each automation, as far as I understand, you have 20, a limit of 25, act, well, 20, probably 24 actions. So you can have 25 steps total in each automation. So if you see here, some of these have like three things. So if you have a whole onboarding checklist and you have like five different onboarding automations, consider if you can take those and you can build out a longer workflow for the automation just based off of one trigger. So if you have say three things in, so, so the first example was we took four different statuses down to one. So you're saved three there. The next example, if you have five people that you're sending five emails to, you take it down to one you're saving four there. So that's seven total that you've saved. And now here, if you have three different onboarding automations, or if you have three different project management uh, automated checklist automations, then you can bring those three down into just one trigger. And so now you've saved another two. So these are basically the three ways. And to do that, you would just come in here, add your trigger, and then here you can add multiple actions. So you can just keep adding more actions here that will trigger right after, right after this trigger is triggered. So those are the three basics. So adding dynamic information rather than static in the trigger, adding dynamic information rather than static in the action, and then adding more than one action, making it a, if you were using Zapier, using a multi-step zap to do this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you, are you curious how to do one of those last automations I just talked about, which was the automated checklist automation? You can check out this video right here on the end screen and you can go learn how to automate a checklist in Airtable. It'll really take your Airtable project management, your Airtable database to the next level, allowing you to easily work through client projects, work through your own projects in a systematized fashion. So just go click that link in the middle of the screen right here, go learn more about Airtable automations and create some automated checklists. So without further ado, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.